Hi everyone, I'm just doing my, continuing my immigrant story and reflection and unfortunately for us things are slowing down. We are also getting impacted by the war in Israel and what is happening over there. So we're all hoping and praying that they find a ceasefire, they find a peaceful solution and we're hoping that things get better but things are tough. Things are tough for everybody and things are getting harder for me. I know my rent is going up and my wages are staying the same. And it's very, very hard. And, you know, it's we all worried. We don't know how things are going to go, how we're going to make ends meet. It's very hard to find another place to stay on minimum wage. So I try to take extra hours when my health is good. Unfortunately for me in this job, I did lose my health with all the shouting, the swearing, people taking things out on me. And so I have to manage it very carefully with my doctor. And the unfortunate thing is for me, all these people that the police supported, they set up calls and they all took it in turns to take their frustration out on me. And all of this was supposed to have stopped when the investigation closed and when the police told me this is done now, don't come back here, it was supposed to have stopped. And I told my mom, I said, you see, I was telling you that it was Credit Suisse. I was telling you that they were bringing Anita into it and you said no. They're making up stories. And I said to her, now the police confirmed it. When I told you, you people didn't support me, you didn't stand up for me, you didn't believe me. And I'm tired of it. I said, I don't want people taking their frustrations out on me. And my mom gets upset about the smallest things. Like even on my birthday, my phone was playing up. So when I had it working, I phoned her. She burst out crying. And when things happen in the family, they take it out on me. And I'm tired of it. I told my mom, I said, I had a nice birthday. Why are you crying? Right? And she's like, it's so long, you can't get anything. I said, yeah, but now I've got a job. It's not like before. And, you know, it's frustrating for me because my mom told me I wanted to go to university. I wanted to study. I didn't get those opportunities. But that's not my fault. I understand it's frustrating for her. It's frustrating for people who came before me who didn't have the opportunities I had. But why can't they be happy for me? And my nieces and nephews are going to get opportunities that I never dreamt of. Just like my mother and them never anticipated the computer coming up or the internet. I don't want them to begrudge what I have. Even when I went to university, I didn't tell anyone because no one was bothered with me. Nobody came to help me to make a cup of tea or make a meal. So I just didn't bother. I got on with it. And I've had no life, so please be happy for me, for whatever little happiness I get. I had no life in Canada. Those 11 years I volunteered, I sat and I sent out thousands of applications every day for work, and I never had anything. I didn't have a TV. I used to go sit in the uh, library to watch the TV, to watch the Olympic Games. Even now, I'm still, I just wanted now to get a TV. My computer is crashing. Every time I put it on, I'm watching, all of a sudden it's crashing. Because things don't last more than two to three years now. And I can't, I don't even have the money to get a new computer. But I'm doing everything I can to improve my life and to make things better. And when I leave this job, when I get promoted internally, or when I leave teleperformance, I'll be happy because when I told the police what was happening, when I told them and they reprimanded people at HSBC and Credit Suisse wouldn't confirm anything, they didn't want to believe me. And people were saying, oh, the way this thing is going, you're going to go to jail. Why would I go to jail? I told the truth. If they could tap my calls, they could tap my emails, they could do everything for to try to catch me at something that I never did. Why can't they do it to Credit Suisse? Why can't they do it to Eddie and Jane and all these people that kept calling wherever I was? Why did they only come after me? 
and I wasn't even at Credit Suisse for that long. I was only there for six months. Eric Charbonneau, Matthew Hind, Ryan Lapointe, they all said they liked me. So if they liked me so much, why didn't they offer me a permanent job? And the way the cease and desist is structured, which hasn't been lifted, I can't talk to any past or present employees of Credit Suisse. So that means I can never work in banking. It doesn't even make sense. And it's wrong of them to shut down my career in banking for their own issues and what they have going on. And they must also leave my sister out of it because I'm tired of it. I'm tired of every time I walk in, I hear Anita, she's here. Or every time I go somewhere. My sister is not my mother and they don't need to know where I'm going and what I'm doing. If they want to know, they'll ask me. There's nothing for them to be worried about. And Eddie Farid definitely doesn't need to know where I am and where I'm going and what I'm doing. And people don't need to call him. It was the same thing in Zimbabwe. I don't want to be sitting on calls and listening to my sister crying. I've had enough of it. If you want to know something, ask me. Don't go to the police and ask the police. They don't know anything to begin with. And people won't confirm the truth. So what are they going to do? I said no and I meant it. I'm a very professional person. In the time I've been in Canada, I have not had any relationships with anyone, any men. I've not gone out, I've not dated. And that's been my choice, partly because I've never had the opportunity or the money to go out and do anything, and partly because I haven't met anybody here that I'm interested in. So people mustn't make up things and say, oh, Eddie wanted to be her friend and all this. It's insulting to me. I did a good job and I was very professional. And I don't want that. And they're doing it through other people. So then I have to sit and listen on the phone. Oh, Eddie, she's sweet. And I had training with Roddy Galbraith. Roddy told me if you hear them saying that, change your voice. Change it up. Change how you talk. The Americans don't like people who are too sweet. Well, you know what Zimbabweans do? We like people that are sweet and that are good and that are kind. And if the American, don't, American women don't like it, if they like their women to be a little bit bitter or a little bit to show off and show their power, more power to them. I don't have to count out to them. I'm Canadian. The same way like Marco Mendocino when they wanted to release that guy who was a, a killer and he said, oh, I didn't know. So who is supposed to know? You are the minister. Who is supposed to know if you don't know? The same way he didn't make time for me when I had that harassment going on and he wouldn't even sit down with me or talk to me or make the time for me. And my concerns were very serious. It's very, very serious what they accuse me of. And I've got no time for it. I'm glad he stepped down. It was time. People are very disappointed with Marco Mendocino and how he's handled his portfolio. And I don't know why people are still voting for the Liberals. Rents are rocking up, expenses are going up, and the wages are stagnant. Now they want to bring in the basic income. Let's see if it's going to be enough to help those of us that really need it. Because I'm tired of earning minimum wage and having people put roadblocks in my way. And I told my mom, she's like, well, you were in such a top power job and other people couldn't get work in the family. But that's not my fault. I had my days off doing my three hours commute or two hours commute. I had my days off waking up at 4.30 in the morning, standing in the cold, waiting for the bus to come. And sometimes my brother-in-law used to drive past me and I'd be waiting there for the bus so I could get the bus, get the train and then come downtown from Meadowvale, from Mississauga. Long trips. When my niece couldn't get work, they took that out on me also. They, my mom was saying she's working in a factory. I said, you know what? I also had my days off working in factories. That's not my fault. I don't want people to keep taking things out on me. It's not fair to me. 
I had my days off waking up at six in the morning working in a bakery in England. I opened the bakery, I made the sandwiches, I made the food for the day. I locked up at the end of the day. It's not fair for them to take it out on me and keep me poor, keep me living off my overdraft, keep me keep blocking opportunities for me. It's not right. And it's not right to say, think about everyone else in the family. Where was everyone else in the family when I was studying to get my masters, to get my degrees, to get my diplomas? Nobody was here with me. I was on my own. And it's not fair to say to me, think about everyone else in the family when they've got two parents, when they can move in with their parents if something happens to their jobs. It's not right. And I'm tired of it. And I'm tired of people going through other people like Eddie Farid and Jane and all of them to get to me because I don't deserve it. They need to get on with their lives and leave me so I can actually build a career and build up my finances. And the same thing happened when I was supporting Roger Federer. As soon as I got off work, she's here, she's here. Why don't the police see that I've done the right thing and that Credit Suisse is the problem? The minute I went onto the internet, I would get these fake messages. Oh, you've won a prize or click here, talk to Roger privately. Roger told me if there is anything, come to me. And when I went to his foundation, they said, sorry, we can't help you. So then that's disappointing for me. But if that's how it is, that's how it is. I can't change it. And I'm tired of it. If you want to support a, a tennis player, go and find another tennis player that you want. And please don't come and tell me you want to support me because I'm quite capable of doing the work on my own, just like I've done it for one in Canada, just like I've done it, done it for Bono. I don't need you to say we want to support you. Meanwhile, you're building your, you're using me to build a relationship so that you can get access to Bono and to Roger Federer and all these people that came to me and asked me to support them. And I want that to be very, very clear. They came to me, whether it was Rafa Nadal or Djokovic or Federer or Andy Murray, they came to me and I don't want people to use me. And then I must be left hanging while everyone else gets all the accolades and gets all the benefits. I've done a lot of volunteering in Canada. I've helped to put in place processes that have helped immigrants in this country, that have made HR the profession it is today. And yet I cannot get work in HR. And it's not right. I want things to change for me. I want to be earning those big salaries over 70,000 a year. Because when I tell people what the right thing is, Instead of getting rewarded for it, I get punished. Even at teleperformance, it's taken a long time for people to actually start respecting me, respecting my leadership, seeing that, okay, you know what, Belinda's making a point when she says we have limitations. Instead of coming down on me, putting me on six months of corrective action when I've done nothing wrong. It's very frustrating when you have the skills, you have the education and the knowledge, and you've run departments and you've run organizations and people are, are coming down on you. It's very, very frustrating. And I really don't care if these people are friends with my mom or if they're friends with Eddie or friends with Jane, it's not their life, it's my life and it's my sister's life and I don't want to sit and hear my sister crying on the other end because people are abusing me, putting the phone down on me, mistreating me because I've gone through a lot. I've gone through a lot that only my sister and my brother know about and they're sick of it. They're sick of seeing how people treat me in Canada and how they shout at me and yell at me and scream at me on the phones and use vulgar language on me. And then my dad's cousin says, you shouldn't repeat it. No, I should, because people should know. 
what kind of uh, people the Americans are. Because it's disgusting. They need to wake up. And they must leave my sister alone. I've told the people that before. Leave my sister out of it. If you want to know something, come and ask me. Don't go and tell my sister because I'm not two years old. I'm not five years old. I can make my own decisions. And my aunt and uncle in Prospect have no control over me. I'm not going to go and live in America. I'm staying here in Canada. Canada is my home. And I'm, I want a good paying job and I want all the work I put in with HRPA, supporting Miller Thompson, supporting the law conferences, supporting the annual trade shows. I want to get the rewards for that because I've done a lot of work in Canada to help build up the HR profession. And I deserve better. The only places I'll go back to, I'll go back to Europe if there's an opportunity. But I'm tired of it. And they mustn't hurt my sister. I made that very clear. She's got her own life and her own family. And I've got my own life. And, I, and she, I'm tired of people banging the phone down on me, telling me, leave me out of it, and then the next thing they want to get involved. Stay out of it. You didn't help me. You didn't come with me to study. You didn't come here and make a meal for me. You didn't do anything for me. So stay out of it. Walk in my shoes before you come and criticize what I'm doing. Because I've helped to build up this country and I've helped to build up Zimbabwe and South Africa. And I know what I'm doing. I'm not an idiot. My mother is like that. She gets upset about things. But we know her children, we know her, and we know how she is. Things are hard for everyone. I don't need my career destroyed because I don't want to be friends with someone. And Roddy Galbraith told me, he said, change your voice. The minute you hear them saying, oh, she's sweet, change it. Change it up and, and give them what they want. And that's what I do because I don't, I don't need the abuse, especially by the women and the men screaming at me as if, they, as if they're talking to a dog. I don't even talk to my dogs the way that some of these customers talk to me. It's not right. People need to get a life. And instead of coming after me, go and do something. Go and volunteer, go and build up your community and leave my sister and me alone because we're sick of it and we're not too nice. I got a lawyer for a reason. So don't think that we're too nice because you will be unpleasantly surprised. I didn't become an HR leader or move into leadership positions from being too nice. I didn't manage to move from continents from Africa to Europe to North America by being too nice. I know when I'm nice and I'm not willing to take that abuse 